Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's Dr. Levi with your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Today is December the 14th, 2016. Beautiful day here in LA. A little bit overcast, slightly chilly, but still beautiful as per usual. So I hope and believe that wherever you are today, you're making it a great day. Why? Because you take greatness wherever you are. And also remember and think about this. The holidays are coming up. So it's important that you're mindful about your diet. It's mi you have to be mindful about your, your spending habits. So often I find that many of my, my patients and even my friends and family go into extreme amounts of debt during the holidays because seeing something doesn't mean you need something. You know, so you can see it and like it doesn't mean you have to buy it. It doesn't mean you have to buy it for yourself or anyone else. So it's so important during the holidays that you remain fiscally responsible and buy what you can if you want. You know, I'm telling my staff and, and my friends and my family this year, I, any gifts they want to give me, give it away. Give it to Toys for Tots, Make-A-Wish Foundation, give money to the Cancer Research Pediatric AIDS Foundation, give it away. But myself this year, I'm letting everyone know, I'm putting everyone on blast. I'm not accepting any gifts. I want you to give it away. Why? Because there's, at this stage of my life, thank God, there is nothing that I want or someone can give me that I can't buy for myself. So I don't want anything more from my friends and family. I want you to give it to people who have less than. I want you to give it to people who really have very little. You know, I, I feel very blessed and very fortunate. So I love being able to give away as much as I can. And this year, my goal is this Christmas to give away as much stuff as I can, literally to, to clear out everything I can give away. I want to do that. So I'm asking you this year to do the same thing. I'm asking you to think about this. Instead of reminding our kids about, well, what can they get? What can they get? You know, ask them, what can they give away? Because remember, we only get what we're willing to give away. So why not give away more love, more understanding, more forgiveness, more acceptance without any judgment, without any finger pointing? As I've said before on the show, when we, when we point at someone else, we have three fingers pointing at us. So it's so important that we really stay in a place of acceptance of every human being, really, and doing what we can to make humanity better. And I believe that we do that by being of service to other people. And again, I think this year, I really want everyone to think about what can they give to other people? Not about getting gifts, not about reminding people what you want, what you want, but really about what can you do to help other people? You know, when I was driving in this morning to the show, I, uh, I got, for some reason, I, I was reminiscing in my mind about a story that, that, that stays in my head during the holidays. And it actually, during the year, it comes up. And I was listening to a radio show about uh, eight, maybe nine years ago, and a lady was being interviewed by uh, a radio host, and he was asking her what was she going to do when she left the show because she was homeless and she had five kids. And she said, oh, well, me and my kids are going to really celebrate Christmas tomorrow. It's going to be such a wonderful day. And the host asked her, well, how is it going to be so wonderful? You know, we're going to give you some food before you leave and some money and a blanket, but you will have nothing but that. She, he said, you have nothing. And she said, what are you talking about? I have everything. I have my kids. I have my health. And I have God. I have a belief that everything is going to be okay. And that if you gave me nothing today by being on your show, my life is still very, very fulfilled. And I think about that very often because I think when we think only about the material, about stuff, stuff makes life heavy. But when you give away things, it makes your life very light and very uplifting and one of service. And, and that, when I heard that, that show, and this, again, it was many years ago, I'm just, it re, in my mind, there's a reflection of, of, of her priorities, that her faith sustained her. Her children sustained her and that not having anything in his eyes, he, he, he had the wrong vision. His vision was very myopic. Hers was very open and very distant, very visionary because hers was about, well, I have a lot. I have my faith. I have my kids. I have my health. I have my life. And, and just to hear her talk about that, I, I, it was a Christmas I spent by myself actually in L.A. And I remember just thinking, wow. How can I be more like that great woman? How can, I, how can I be more about giving? How can I be more about really living a life of sustained gratitude? Not being grateful for stuff, 
Stuff will pass, like relationships. Relationships will come and go. After we learn the lesson from the person or get the blessing from them or as the season has passed for that relationship, that will go away. However, you take you wherever you go. You always take yourself with you. When you look in the mirror, if you look at no one else, you're there. So I think it's so important that we know and understand that. Be aware of who you are. Love yourself. Be appreciative of yourself. And know that as you go forward in your life, again, it's really not about getting, getting, getting. It's more about giving, giving, giving. So using our, our biceps less and our triceps more to give things away. So I hope that resonates with you today because our show today is, is about giving. It's about giving from the heart and giving with the sustained thought that it's not about I want to get this and give that. I want to give that so I can get this. No, I'm talking about unconditional giving. It's like unconditional loving. Loving people who don't love us back. Loving people who don't say thank you. Loving people who are not very kind to us. Loving people that are racist, that are bigoted, that, you know, all those bad things. You know, <laughs> it's, it's easier to love people that are good to us. It's more of a challenge to love the people that don't treat us like we have any value or worth. So I'm asking everyone this Christmas to do four things. Number one, to be mindful of your fiscal spending. Be really mindful of that. Two, to give away things. To really make this the season of letting people know that you don't want gifts from them. You want them to give it away to charities that will really benefit, like Toys for Tots and, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I mean, these are, these are great organizations that are really about uplifting humanity, about making children feel good. Why? Because children really are our future. They really are the legacy that sustains us. So why not give to them to make them feel good and to give them hope? That's the great thing about Toys for Tots, and it's a great thing about the guests that we have on today. They're about reminding us that it is in giving and in giving to children that we lift up humanity because we remind our future that there's always hope. There's always a better day. There's always, no matter what you may think you don't have, if you have your health, as my grandmother would say, you have enough. Again, if you have your health, you have enough. You know, my great-grandfather would always say, uh, God, please clothe me in my right mind. When I was a kid, I would think, oh, there he goes again. Same statement, same crazy statement. Now at 35 plus, that statement makes a lot of sense to me. That if you have your mind and your health, <laughs> you, you, you're having a good day. You know, if you wake up today and you take a breath, you're, you're in a good place. You know, uh, this past Monday, one of my patients came in, and she often complains about everything and everybody and anything and anybody. So, but, but Monday, I caught her. I, I wasn't in that place of, like, really listening to it. So I asked her, I said, you know what? When I walked in, uh, she said, oh, hey, Dr. Levi. She said, another bad day. And she went off for, like, like, three minutes. Okay, so I told her, I said, you know what? Today is not a day I can really listen to you talk about everything bad. I said, I'm going to leave the room. I'm going to come back in about five minutes. And I went out and I got her a piece of paper and a pen. I said, I need you to write down 20 things that you're grateful for. Just 20 things that make you happy. 20 things that, that make you feel good. And she looked up at me and she said, can we break it down to three? I said, no, we can't. She said, what about four? I said, nope. I said, 20. I said, when I come back in this room, and my office manager, Jessica, was there, and I was going to tell her what I'd done. I thought, you know, Jessica, she's so kind and so loving and so wonderful. I know she would have said, well, Dr. Levi, just tell her, ask her to do five. But I wasn't going to let her off the hook. So I went back in the room about five minutes later, and she had two things on. So I told her, I said, you're going to be in detention a long time today because you're not leaving this room until you write down 20 things that you are grateful for. So I left the room. Another five minutes, I came back in. She had five. She said, well, you know, I have to get to work. I said, I know. Me too. I said, but until you write these 20 things down, if I have to call 911, you're not leaving here. You, you need to write 20 things. So I came back in five minutes later. She had 20 things written. Some of them was kind of duplicated, but I, I, didn't, I didn't say anything. I gave her a, a mini break. And at the end, I asked her, so how do you feel now that you've written 20 things that really are good for you, that make you feel good, that remind you that today is a gift, you know, because tomorrow and even the rest of the day is not promised. I said, how does that make you feel? 
And she said, you know, I actually feel good. I said, well, great. I said, now your homework, I'm going to see you back in three weeks. I want you to write down 20 things every day. Even if you repeat them, I want you to write them down. Because when we write things down, it helps our psyche. It's like an imprint to remind us what, we, what really is a priority for us. So if you're making a strategic action plan about your life, about, about being in a place of ever-expanding gratitude and service to humanity, then if you write 20 things down, you'll feel better every day. So I can't wait to see her in three more weeks to see how she's doing and how she's progressing. And she said, why am I doing this? It has nothing to do with my wrist problem. I said, well, it actually does. Because we know, of course, that the mind-body-soul connection is very, very intense. So if you feel good, I've seen it in my practice all the time. Individuals that have great attitudes, that want to feel good, that want to get better, they get better faster after surgery. People that come in and bitch and moan and groan and are not happy about anything, those are people, one, I don't want to operate on them, and two, is after operating on them, it takes everything I can to remind them to feel good about life so that they can feel better, so that they can heal faster and get on with their lives. So I just want to remind everyone, your attitude really does determine your altitude. So you want to feel good about life. You want to be kind to everyone. You want to be fair with people. And remember, in being kind to other people and being fair to other people, you're being kind and fair to yourself. Because often, we only treat people the way we were treated, and we only treat people the way they allow us to treat them. So if someone's not treating you properly, let them know, hey, this is not working for me. You have to treat me with more love, with more kindness, with more goodness, with more compassion. And if you're not feeling good about people in your life and in your, your circle, well, guess what? You want to take that circle and break it down. And as I've said before, if you're not losing friends, then you're not growing. Because people don't grow at the same rate. They really don't. So when you look at your life and you see that as your life unfolds into greater success, greater love, greater compassion, greater goodness, you'll see that that circle of goodness will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And sometimes you may be left with only a few friends, maybe two or three family members. And remember, all family is not good family. All friends are not good friends. So as you're ascending, often jealousy and and anger will be directed your way because people will often think, well, why is he getting that? Why is she getting that? And I'm not. Well, you worked for it. <laughs> you did the work. You made the application. You were doing all the good things to get yourself up. While they were looking at you, you weren't looking at them. You were going up. So remember, as you're making your way in life, never be apologetic for your success. I'm just learning that now. Never be apologetic because you had to, to scratch and crawl to get there. And guess what? It takes your guts and your work ethic to sustain you there. So the people that are looking at you, talking about you, let them talk. It was my dad would say, you know, you know, when I come home and I would say, you know, Dad, this happened. I got bullied here and, and this was terrible. He said, Levi, I don't want to hear it. He said, you know, I just, I don't want to hear it. And I would say, why? So I, you know, it was a really rough day. It was this, that. He said, as I told you before, it never matters what people think of you. What does matter is what you think of yourself. And remember, son, if you think that you're a good person, then that will sustain you. If you're waiting for other people to validate who you are and what you are, you're going to be waiting on the sideline, Levi, a long, long time. So I'm grateful for my dad now. I wasn't as grateful, unfortunately, when he was living, but now I get it. So I hope you get it. And that is really to, to be in this place of sustained understanding about your life, about who you are, about what your goals are, about where you want to go. And again, to understand that as you move up, some of the same people around you today, they may not be there tomorrow. Some of the same people that are, are you having dinner with and that you're chilling with, guess what? They may not be there. Because as they see you go, they may want to pull you down. However, they often forget that as you're ascending, you want to always reach a hand back to pull them up too. You want everybody who wants to go for the ride to come up too. But many times that doesn't happen, and it's okay. Um, the goal for the show today is remind everyone to really be in that place of loving you, accepting you, believing in you, and doing what you can to make humanity better. That's what it's about, real easy. So... I hope, that, I hope that resonates with you because as I was driving in today, I had, had all these thoughts about what I really wanted to discuss, you know, from this morning to even last week after each show, I always think about how can I make the show better? How can I, how can I make humanity more loving, more caring? How can I make it better?
with my, with my short existence here? How can I make it better? So I hope you think about that. I hope you're in that mindset of, of, okay, I got up today. I was able to open my eyes. Now what am I going to do with this day? How am I going to make the world better? Am I simply going to use breath and use air and use food and not do anything with it? Or am I going to exercise? Am I going to be mindful of my diet? And am I going to compliment someone today? Am I going to thank someone today? Am I going to tell someone I really appreciate you for just being who you are? Not for what you can give me, not for what I can get from you. I appreciate you just because of you. I hope you think about that today. I'm thinking about it now, but more importantly, I want to live it. So I hope you can live it with that thought of how can I make the world just a little bit better? How can I speak to that neighbor who passes by me every day and doesn't say anything? How can I speak to that person who sits next to me in church or in temple or in synagogue who never speaks to me? How can I say something to that family member that took advantage of me when I was a child, who beat me, who molested me, who was not very kind to me, who did all those horrible things to me? How can I forgive them? Well, you know what? We have to do that. We have to go to that place of forgiving everyone so that we can lift ourselves up to go to that next place in our lives of success, prosperity, joy, happiness, truth, magnanimousness, spectacular living. I really want you to remember this. The goal of this show is to remind you how you can optimize your life, how you can maximize the short time that you're here on earth. Because we don't have a lot of time here. You may think you do, but before you know it, five years are gone, 10 years are gone, 15 years are gone, 20 years are gone. It's like, wait, 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 what happened? Well, you know what? You got to get it when you can get it. So live your life in that place of service, in that place of dedicated compassion, in that place of ever-expanding gratitude and truth. And, and truth is so important. I want to remind everyone before I bring our guests on, when it comes to speaking, especially during the holidays, I really, again, I want to remind you of three things. When you to think of the following. Number one, is it true? Number two, does it have to be said? And number three, is it uplifting? If it's not true, if it doesn't have to be said, and it's not uplifting, just zip it. Say nothing. It's always better to say nothing, nothing than to say something negative or to say something that you know is not true, that's full of gossip and hate and violence and is very vitriolic. That's not the way to go. You really want to live in that place of ever-expanding joy and goodness and, and being kind to everybody, no matter how they look, how they smell, their religion, their sex, their gender, their gender identity. That's not your business. Your business is how can you treat other people the way you want to be treated? Real simple. If you think about it, really, really simple. So, with that said, that was our opening monologue. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed sharing it with you. And uh, I want to talk about our guest today. Our guests today are from the Toys for Tots Foundation, and I, I really am grateful that they're taking time on their busy schedule to be with us. You know, they're, they're what I call, you know, when I, was a, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be one of them, actually, and that is a Marine, because I've always thought Marines were like the, the real X-Men, the real Avengers, you know, they're like the real superheroes, because they, they really embody, for me personally, discipline and truth, honesty, and service. You know, whenever I see a Marine in my mind, I, I'm just simply thinking, simplify, simplify. This is always going through my head. When I see them, I always want to sit up more straight. I, I want to I want to bring my shoulders back. I want to I want to always thank them because, you know, as a big supporter of the USO, of course, of our Marines and our veterans, men and women, I thank the veterans I've said before on this show many, many, many times. They really are the true superheroes of this great country. We have our sustained freedoms because of them. So when it comes to the Marines and to the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, I mean, there, there's so many compartments of service. I, I cannot thank them enough for what they do. And I always say that when, when I see them, I, I, I never simply say, thank you for your service. I always tell them, I really appreciate your service and thanks for being you. And so often they will say, well, why the thanks for being you? I say, well, because you 
made, you took the oath. You did the service. You went abroad. You sacrificed your time. You sacrificed possibly a body part, your mind. You give away so much when you're in the service. So I always say that to them. They always say, well, you know what? I never thought about that. I said, well, you did. You gave a lot to be a Marine, to be a, in the Navy, to be in the Army, no matter which branch you serve to choose. These great men and women do a lot for us to have what we have. So I ask you, and I've said this on the show many times too, when you see a veteran that is possibly homeless or living on the side of a, a freeway, it always, I, I can't tell you the, the depth of, uh, <clears throat> the depth of sadness I feel when I see that because I think, how could they be there when our country has given, they've given so much to our country and now the country has sacrificed them? How can we do that? How can we do that to someone who is, who, who went abroad, who fought, who was of service, was exposed to horrible elements psychologically and physically and spiritually even? Because don't forget, the warfare is not just on the, on the physical plane. It's also on the psychic, metaphysical, spiritual plane. So I think, how can they come back to this country and now have no health insurance? How can they go to the VA and have substandard care? How can they be here and not have a job, not have a home? I just don't get it. I can't tell you how many vets I've had come to my, my place to, to take a shower and to give them food, to give them a blanket. I can't tell you how many vets in my practice I've given free care to, and I still continue to do that. You know, uh, it was two months ago when I was in D.C., when I spoke on Capitol Hill, actually, that award was because of humanitarian care that had given to vets over the, the past, what, 10 plus years. I, I think it's so important that we know that the veterans should be treated with dignity, with respect, and with the highest order of compassion. And when you see a veteran, man or woman, I ask you to not, not treat them like they're less than, or like they don't belong, uh, or, or as if they... Uh, or you're better than they are. No one's better than no one else. Like being a physician, I'm no better than the dog walker or the teacher or the, or the garbage collector. It's just a job of service. And of course, I could be the doctor today, patient tomorrow. So it's so important that we treat everyone with love, compassion, and truth and honesty. And the veterans, though, they're a special breed. They really should be treated with that because we're here because of them. And with that introduction, I really want to thank Master Sergeant Campo and First Sergeant Schuler for being with us today. They're from the Toys for Tots Foundation. You know, I have the box in my office in Glendale if I want to drop off toys until Friday. And I want to thank everyone who've given so much. I want to welcome them to the show. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Dr. Levy. Oh, it's, it's, really, it's really a joy to have you guys here. Thank you, Campbell. Thank you, Schuler. This is uh, it's a great day to talk about the Toys for Tots Foundation. I want to talk about both of you. Where are you guys from? Originally, I'm from a town called Lake Placid, Florida. Yes. And you had a big family growing up? Yes, sir. Um, I'm the youngest of eight kids, actually. Oh, that's fantastic. That must have been great during Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> you would think so. You would think, exactly. Yes, sir. And what about yourself, Campbell? Uh, I grew up right outside New Orleans, so small town of St. Bernard. Yes. So... Uh, Smaller family, I have one sister. Great. Uh, big extended family, though, so lots of aunts, uncles. Fantastic. You know, I'm from New Orleans also. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, no. yeah, I went to St. Augustine High School. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. St. Uh, Aug. Uh, St. Aug, you got it. Gold, right? Purple and gold, you yeah. got it. You got it. So it's great to have you guys on the show. Let's talk about the Toys for Tots Foundation. You know, why are you guys involved in that, and what do you think it has with respect to impact on the community? Um. The Toys for Tots Foundation has been around the Marine Corps for a very long time. Yes. Um, the impact that it has um, within the communities, uh, within the country as a whole, is tremendous. Um, it's a positive impact. It's one that I enjoy seeing at the end of the campaign. Um, for me, it's kind of personal. Um, when I was stationed in Cleveland, Ohio, and I was a coordinator out there you know first going through it the first two months or so 
you know, it, it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of work. Yes. And you don't see the reward of it. Right. You know, but it wasn't until I actually got out there and I started delivering toys to families. And you walk into these cold apartments in December yes. and there's no furniture. There's no food. There's no heat. There's no heat. And, you know, when you're able to turn over a toy to a child and that smile that pops on their face, yes. like it just warms you. Yes. It, it really does. So that's what the program means to me. That's why I'll, I allow it to consume me. Yes. Um, it tends to... It tends to make me or, you know, my daughter has to suffer for it a bit because I tend to neglect her during this period. Yes. I'll make it up to her. Right. You know, but that's what the program means for me. Yes. You know, it's interesting to hear you say that again, once again, as you heard uh, Shuler say just now, and, and again, we hear it over and over, is... I had to sacrifice my daughter for the program. Yes, Again, you, along with other service members, do that all the time. Always sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. And that's why I have so much love, so much compassion, so much acceptance for you all and what you do because it's never simply about you. It's about what you're giving back to the community. And again, to say it, as you said so eloquently, I, will, I sacrifice my daughter at this time, meaning that relationship with her, to give to the community through the Taurus Fatas Foundation. That takes a lot as a father, number one, as a Marine, and as a human being. That's, yes, that's tough. It is. You know, sacrifices, sacrifice that you guys make is uh, it's a, a whole different plane. It, it, there, it, there's no real category for it. Does that make sense? It does. You know, I, I just... Uh, I just appreciate that. What does your wife think about that as, you, as you're doing this? What, what, are, what are her thoughts, you think? Um, her thoughts uh, is that, you know, she understands it. Yes. She's originally from Haiti. Yes. Um, she grew up in New York, um, so she understands the struggle. Right. Um, she's an immigration attorney now down in Marietta. Yes. So she's able to set her own hours. Right. You know, and able to step in and put in that time of course where it's lacking for me right but she she understands the program she understands what it does within the communities so it's something that she does support right and what about your brothers and sisters i'm sure they're very supportive of what you do i'm sure they're very proud of you also they are very proud of me they are very supportive um it's not very often that i get a chance to spend a lot of time with them because they are in florida yes um so i may get down there probably once or twice a year yes yes, yes. again more sacrifice here being of service and sacrifice and family even though you could maybe get be closer to them you still are dedicated to this program yes sir i just uh all i can say is thank you i, I really mean that I heartfeltly it. i really really do you know, yourself, Campo, this is Master Sergeant Campo. Um, what about yourself? What does the program mean to you on a very personal level? I think the, uh, the thing I enjoy most about the program is uh, a lot of the people that we work with. Even yesterday, we had our, our building full of people who were just volunteers coming by to, to help. They right. want to be a part of the program. They want to be a part of giving back. Yes. And uh, I think that's always, like you had mentioned earlier, it's just great to surround your peop your, yourself with people like that. Absolutely. Um, and I mean that's a, that's a lot of what the the program's about. It's all about sacrifice, and everyone's yes. sacrificing. You know, the, for the donations we get, the companies right. sacrifice, people sacrifice their money to give back, and right. uh, it's just great to be a part of that. Great to be with people who are uh, who go to that level to, to give back. Right. And what does your family think about your involvement with the Toys for Tots Foundation? Uh, I think it's the same for a majority of the Marines. You know, we spend a lot of time away from home. There's a lot of uh, you know, after hours events, weekend events, especially right. as we close this Christmas season out, uh, that's spent, you know, on the road supporting the events, trying right. to collect as much as we can. So it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite a bit of time away, but in the end, you know, you, you see uh, the benefit of it. You, right. you see physically, you know, uh, you know, these kids getting toys that they wouldn't normally get. Absolutely. So. You know, for both of you, does it ever get emotional for you when, you when you're there with a family who has nothing? you know, at least may appear to have nothing. And when you walk in there to give that child that toy that will lift his or her spirit, that will give hope, you know, because in my mind, 
you know, I've given, I, we've done toy drives before, you know, Janet and I, my manager, and we've, we've given toys away. And, and for me, often, I have to pull away for a little bit to regroup because when I give a child something, especially when they really have no shoes on sometimes or no socks or really nothing, it just makes me feel like, wow, I'm so blessed. And I'm so fortunate. And that family has nothing. Um, I, I feel like I want to do more. I want, I want to be more authentic in my living. I want to be more authentic in my giving. I want to be a, a, a better human being. You know, I want, to be, I want to be a Marine. You know, I want to be like what you guys do. What you, guys, you guys serve in this way of, of giving, giving, giving. You know? So I want to hear from you all about the, the emotional impact it has on you. Um, I'm not a very emotional person. Um, and showing it with 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 facial expressions, right. you know, or maybe crying or something right, to that right, nature. Right. But it does show in my actions. Right. Um, there has been families that I have encountered, and because we are toys for tots, yes. The only thing that we provide is toys. Right. But there has been occasions where I have went in my own pocket, of course, and I have given them money, of course. Or I've, went out and bought gift cards, right. you know, so that they can get clothing or right. food or something else right. to that nature. Um, there was one year where when I was out in Cleveland yes. and I flew back here to, you know, be with, with my family on the actual Christmas Day. Yes. We didn't o open that one present in right. the house. Right. And the reason we didn't do it it's because I felt so guilty mm -hmm. about having so much mm -hmm. and having to witness others that didn't have anything. Yes. Um, so what I've done is, is is I have instilled that into my daughter. Yes. You know, so when we see people on the side of the road, we give money. Yes. You know, when she sees people out, she always, daddy, daddy, money, I need money. For right. what, baby? There's a guy over there. Mm. I give her the money. Mm -hmm. She takes it to him. Right. It makes her happy. Absolutely. It makes me happy to see her, you know, in that light, in that something positive that I'm instilling in her. Absolutely. So, yes, I show the, the emotions in that way. Right. But, but how wonderful is that, though, that at an early age you are taking this moldable, phenomenal mind of hers to understand the power of giving. Not in just taking and getting, but in giving things away. And for her, at how old is she? She's five. But think about that. At five years old, to recognize someone has need. Because often at that age, it's all about them. Mm -hmm. It's about what they want, what they want to get, where they want to go. But for her to have the compassion and the, the bigness of her heart to say, huh, he or she has less than us, Daddy. What can we do to, to help them? That's wonderful parenting on your part. Thank you. It really is. Thank you. What does your wife think about when she sees that? Because that, that's, that's amazing, though, to, to have that type of parents at five years old, for her to have the insight to say, we can help them mm -hmm. and we should help them. Daddy, let's go. Let's, let's give mm -hmm. to them. It makes her proud. It has it, to. It really does. Um, like I mentioned, she's about service as, as well. Right. And she does a lot of pro bono work. Right you know, um, helping people get immigration statuses and different things. Right. So it, it's something that she enjoys as well. Absolutely. Yes. That, that, that's that's a, a great, great story. And what about yourself, uh, Master Sergeant Campbell? What about the emotional impact it has on you and your family? Uh, I'm kind of, I'm probably close to, to the same way first one Schuler feels. I mean, right. you try not to get too emotionally involved, right. but it, uh, it, it definitely... Uh, it feels good. It has to. It feels great when you, you know, you see the kids and when you see their eyes light up. Right. Um, yeah, it feels great, you know, and, and same thing, you know, when you uh, getting your family involved and uh, sometimes that's, a, that's a, the best way to see them during this time of year. It's true. Uh, it's to get them involved and let them be involved. But, yeah, it always feels great, you know, and you do have to sometimes take a step back, you know, because you do. You feel guilty sometimes about the things you have, right. you know, so... Um, yeah, we work with a lot of other organizations throughout the year too to to do a lot of things in the greater LA area. So uh, it, it's always it brings you down to earth. It grounds you absolutely uh, when you're helping. And it has to for both of you. It has to give you this this real sense of of gratitude for everything that you have. Yes, sir. You know, and what you've achieved and accomplished. It does. Uh, it, it it has to be a sense of 
of of his internal happiness that that you can give this way. It does. It really you know, does. You no, know, I, I like I like to know too. When now, I, I see the impact that you had on your daughter, who had this impact on both of you to give like you're giving. For example, now your daughter will of course be a part of Taurus for Tosh. She'll want to give. She'll want to do. You know, but who influenced First Sergeant Schuler? to do this? Who, who was the hero in your life that made this difference in your thinking? Um, it was definitely my parents. Um, my parents were the most given people that you would ever see. You know, my mom gave all she had up until her death yes. two years ago. Yes. You know, so she definitely played a huge part in that. My father played a huge part in that as well. Right. Yes, sir. That's fantastic. And I'm sure the same impact is with your, with your other brothers, your eight brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. It's fantastic. What about yourself, Master uh, Sergeant Campbell? So the same thing. Probably my parents definitely had an impact. I, uh, I got an uncle that I'm close with, my grandfather, who, uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was always. I mean, it was, it was never about the material things. They would give everything away if they had to. Uh, they were uh, small business owners. You know, things come up missing, you know, things... Uh, People need stuff, and right. none of it mattered, you right. know. So, and it was, uh, you know, witnessing that, watching it, it, uh, it really makes you desire the physical things. It right. really puts things in perspective. So, yeah, I think, especially like I said, my parents are uh, always, yeah, just trying to give back. So, right. You know, when you guys were saying that, I, it made me reflect on my my grandmother who passed away about five years ago now. I'll never forget it was during Christmas time in New Orleans, you know, going Canal Street. If you can remember, there used to be like Santa Claus ringing the bell. It was for the uh, Salvation Army. Yeah. And I'll never forget one day I was, my grandmother and I, were, we were downtown, we were walking. There was a, a little kid, my height, standing right next to Santa, had one shoe that was just tattered and torn. And so my grandmother were walking past. We got to the end of the block. She said, we have to go back there. So we went back and we started talking to the kid. And we started talking to the mom who walked up to us. My grandma was walking up to her. And uh, my grandma said, well, we're going to go and buy him some shoes. And so we went to the store. It was a Krause. We went to Krauss. Excuse me, it was a Sears. We went to Sears, and we actually got, got him some shoes. And uh, when we walked out, I told my grandmother, I said, well, are we going to give them some money too? And I said, what about a jacket? I think he needs a jacket. And my grandmother said, well, I don't have money for a jacket. And so I took off my jacket, and I gave it to the kid. And I looked up my grandmother, and I said, is that okay? She said, that was okay, Levi. <laughs> and I, I remember that. And that sounded like a silly story, but, you know, as we were talking, I remember that as clear as, as yesterday. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I do think people in our lives can influence us to be givers or to be takers, how would they influence? But I also think we have to have, I, I, I want to say this inner, this inner clock, this inner um, clock of what's right and what's wrong, mm -hmm. and how can we give? I, I, don't, and I don't know if that can be taught, but I do think it can be influenced, and I think it can be nurtured. And uh, I haven't thought about that with my grandmother, I don't know how many years, but that... Uh, I can I can literally see her saying yeah, it's it's okay, Levi. And I was cold after that too. <laughs> but it was like it was like I felt good that I had given a child that had uh, had really had nothing. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, had nothing. Um, now I want to say, how have you guys seen the program change over the past several years? Have you seen it growing by leaps and bounds? Do you see it having valleys where it's people are not giving as much? What are you all seeing as a trend? Um, it definitely has grown. Um, right. I think, if I'm not mistaken, between Marine and civilian coordinators, we're somewhere around 970, um, and that's all across the wow. United States and its territories. That's pretty fantastic. Um, 970? Yes, sir. 970 wow. different coordinators that goes out there, and um, we're probably almost in every wow. community at this point. That's fantastic. So it has definitely grown. Um, you know, of course, a short time ago, we went through the recession right. and, you know, the donations did drop around that time, right. which is understandable, right. but they're definitely on the incline. Yes, that's, sir. That's fantastic. That, um, that, that's great to hear, you know, cause it really is about giving. 
It is. And, and what, one thing that I, I want to remind our listeners about is not only about giving during the holidays, it's about giving every day. Like so often people say, well, I'm going to go and volunteer on, on Christmas or Thanksgiving. Well, they're 300 60 plus other days during the year. <laughs> what about volunteering during those days? You yes, know? Sir. What yeah. about giving to Toys for Tots during those days? You know, their donations are accepted throughout the year, I'm sure. And if you really want to give, I'm asking you to really think about this foundation, Toys for Tots, because think about it as First Sergeant Chula said and Master Sergeant Campbell said, it's, it's really about giving. And, and they have the capacity to take toys and to change the lives of people who often have nothing. Uh, First Sergeant Shuler said it really well. He's going into homes where there's no heat, there's no, there's really nothing. Uh, Master Sergeant Campbell said the same thing. He's been in these environments where people have very, very little. And both of them, because they have such big hearts, you heard them say that they feel guilty about having so much. You know, and she would say we couldn't open a gift on Christmas because we have so much and people in, in Cleveland had so very little. So. I, th I think, again, the Toys for Tots are really a reflection of the spirit of the Marine. To me, the spirit of the Marine is about, about giving back, about giving so unconditionally. If no one ever says thank you, you're still going to do the right thing. The Marines are about this mentality of what I've always felt. Marines are about doing the right thing even when no one is looking. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, so often people want the glory and the, oh, great, great, and the claps and the applause. Well, that, that's fine, but are you going to do the right thing when no one is around? Or are you going to do the right thing when it's only you looking back in the mirror at yourself? Have you did the right thing when no one could see you, but you stepped up and you did it because you knew it was the correct ethical work ethic thing to do? Right. Marines, you guys do that. Yes, sir. You do it. Now, I also want to ask you both, why did you become Marines? What was the nidus for you to both think, I want to do this, I want to dedicate my life to this? Because Marines, they're not a joke. This is a very intense form of service. As a reserve or even active duty, is very intense. But to step up and say, I want to and will be a Marine, and then to have the thought, but not just the thought, but to do the work and then to achieve it. It's a monumental achievement. It really is. So I want to hear from you first, Sergeant Shula. Why did you choose this branch? Um, honestly, um, I knew that at that point in my life, yes. I didn't want to go to college. Right. Um, I knew. I was, I won't say I had a hard time in high school. I just didn't pay attention in high school. Right. right. It wasn't so a match. It wasn't it, a match. It wasn't a match at right. the time. Right. You know, so for me to, you know, try and enroll into college and do something um, in that aspect, it wasn't going to happen for right. me. Um, I was 17 years old. I was sitting on the couch, you know, in the phone room. And um, it was the Marine Corps recruiter. You know, I told my mom that, that I was going to go up there and I was going to talk to him. This is just a random call. Random call. But it was meant for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it was planned. There was a plan. They were looking yeah. directly for me. Yes. Um, so she gave me, you know, the side eye, like, you know. Oh, the side eye? Oh, I know that. Who was the Marines, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, I had a, one uncle, which was her brother, that was in the Army. Yes. Um, so I went up. I talked to the recruiter. You know, he gave me the whole spill, however it was. And, um. I told him that I would get back in touch with him. Right. Um, so I went back. I talked to my uncle. You know, and he was like, "Hey, whatever you do, don't join the army." He he was trying to <laughs> push me. He <laughs> did. <laughs> he, he had been a part of um, of the army at that time for right. about eighteen years. Wow. And you know, it it moved him all over the world. Wow. Um, but he told me, "Don't join the army." Um, I don't know a lot about the Marines, but if I'm you go to the Air Force. Right. The Air Force will force you to get your education. Right. The standard of living is a lot better than what you're going to get in the Army or the Marines. He was like, uh, <laughs> go Air Force. Right. I'm like, okay, got you. Right. So that was my intention was to go to the Air Force. Right. Um, and when I talked to my recruiter to tell him that, you know, he pulled the whole reverse psychology thing on me. 
basically, oh, you couldn't handle being a Marine anyway. You know, <laughs> oh, you, gotcha. you probably don't have what it takes what to it be takes a Marine. Okay. <laughs> no. right, right, I'll right. prove you wrong. Right, right, you know, right, right. What do I sign? Are you sign. Right, right. He got you. 19 he years got later. You. 19 years here later. Here I sit. Right, right. Yes, sir. That's fantastic. Yes, sir. So wow. I had to go through the process of having both my mom and my dad sign for me because I was under the age yeah. of 18. Right, you're 17. And once I talked them into doing it and letting them know this is what you I wanted. think I want to do, right. they went ahead on and signed. Right. And what, was, what, what were the reactions of your mom and dad when you initially said to them, you know what, hey, I really want to do this. Can you sign? Well, how did that um, go? If I can speak honestly, yeah, more than honest. You know, back then, being black and being in the military, of course, really wasn't a a popular thing, right? Um, so my parents really wasn't, you know, they weren't for it. Th they wasn't. Got it. They wasn't. Got it. But the more my recruiter talked to them, you know, and explained how things have changed, you know, because. TV, internet, news, all that stuff wasn't, right. the, the information wasn't getting to us right. like it does now. Yes. You know, yes. so that was a conversation that they had to sit down and actually have for them to understand the we, dynamics and how it had changed right. before they were willing to go ahead and sign for it. Right, because they were releasing their son into the hands of the government, basically. Yes, sir. It's a big deal. Yes, sir. Wow, we're glad that you've done it. 19 years, Thank you. 19 more to go. If you over like that. <laughs> 19 more. Exactly. What, what about yourself, Master uh -huh. Sergeant Campbell? What, what, what about yourself? Now, how did that go for you? So I was a little bit older. I joined at 18. I, uh, I was actually <laughs> one year. One year older. Right, exactly. One year wiser. <laughs> right, right, right. No, not wiser. But right, right, right. I, uh, I was actually, I was out of high school. Same thing. I was not, uh, I don't think I was ready for college at all. So right. job interview, job interview, trying different things, trying to find my way. Yes. I was actually on the way to a job interview. We got lost and ended up behind the recruiter's office. <laughs> really? <laughs> Asked them for directions. They convinced us to come in and sit and talk. And right. uh, a couple hours later, I walked out and saying, how soon can I leave? So, <laughs> really? Yeah. It was, it was uh, I had never, I had one uncle in the National Guard, yes. retired, retired now. So I had never really considered the military, never thought about it, service. It was just, uh, like I said, I grew up outside of Louisiana, outside of New Orleans. Right. So it was it's fishing and uh, exactly. ore refiners. That's yes, all we have correct. down there. So, that's correct. Uh, that was that's how I grew up. So, the thought of joining the service was never a thought at all. No. So, but I knew I needed a change. I needed to get away. Uh, you know, I wanted to try something different. And uh, man, they sold it. So, uh, and, and it's been great ever since. But it was definitely a culture shock. So I'm sure. When I walked in, because I was old enough to sign everything myself. So, so what, what did your mom and dad say, and your sister, what did she say? When it's like, okay, she's going to lose her brother, and mom and dad's going to lose their son to the, yeah. to the service. What was yeah, that no, like? It was, uh, it was definitely the end of the world for a little while. So and right. I knew it would be like that. So when I, when I joined, that's why I told them, hey, look, this is, my family, is, no one served before. So right. this is, uh, how soon can I leave? Right, this right. is going to be a shock. Gonna be tough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, the recruiters, they did their best. They took care of us. You know, uh, my family, you know, they, they came to terms with it. But it's it was a big a, deal. It was a big deal that I didn't understand how big it was at the time. Right, right, right. I don't think my kids would make it through if they tried to pull that with me. <laughs> you don't think so? No, no. <laughs> and you've been in service how long now? 19 years. 19 oh, both years. of you? Yeah. Wow. Well, it's six months away from 20, so. Really? Well, you guys got 19 more to go each. It's yeah, not bad. Yeah, 19 no, more. It's not, it's not bad. <laughs> you know, now, what, what about Toys for Tots, the, the, the website? How can they contact you all? And where can they go to drop off toys? And, and what is the cutoff date? Well, if you want to donate uh, monetary values, you can go to www.toysfortots.org, spell out for F O R. And on that site, once you go to the donate tab, you can find the area in which you want to donate. And the most important thing is the money that you donate goes to that community. And when I spend money and I buy toys, I like to spend money within the community in which I'm collecting that money. Absolutely. All right. Um, if you want to drop off toys, you can also go to our website, um, look for the Pasadena location, and once you, if you look up at the top, it'll say toy drop off. Search by zip code, it'll give you all the areas out there 
that you can go and donate to that or drop sites for us. Um, you can also give me a call. My cell phone number is area code 954-336-6571, and I will guide you through any of the processes, whether it's dropping off toys, donate money, whatever it is. I'll walk you through the process. And the last day for the drop sites is this Friday, the 16th. Awesome. Well, I, w I want to thank Master Sergeant Campbell and First Sergeant Schuler for being a, a part of, of this program. And I want to say Toys for Tots uh, will really benefit from everyone's donations. And, you know, Semper Fi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to say that. Um, I tell you, I, I, in, my, in my mind, I've always wanted to be a Marine. It's always been back there. Yes, I, 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 uh, I, I can't explain that away, but. Just in my head. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here with us today. And I, I want to say that uh, it's really about giving. This is a season of giving. And Toys for Tots Foundation is a phenomenal organization whereby, think about it, 97% of what they 97 of what they get is given for toys. They only have literally 2% for overhead and uh, point less than that, I think 1% for some other things, but think about it, 97% of every dollar that's, that comes in is given for toys for children. So it, it's, it's a phenomenal five-star giving charity, so I hope you really will give to them. Go to the website again. What is the website again, for Sergeant Schuler? www.toysfortots.org. Fantastic. Again, I want to thank Master Sergeant Campbell for being here and First Sergeant Schuler. Phenomenal speakers, phenomenal Marines, and I just have two further words. Semper Fi! Hurrah. <laughs> this is Dr. Levi. I'll see you guys next week. Have a great, great holiday, and, and thanks for being a part of our community. It's really about giving. Be kind to the veterans. Remember those men and women are the true heroes of this society, and remember we have our sustained freedoms because of them. This is Dr. Levi. Peace out.